Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel Esculenta Science. Today we are going to learn what is rennet in cheese processing. Before we begin, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss our flavorful explanations. Now let's dive into the today topic. Cheese has been a staple food in many cultures for centuries. And there are now thousands of different varieties of cheese available, each with its own unique flavor, texture and aroma. It is a dairy product made from the milk of cows, goats, sheep or other mammals. It is produced by coagulating the milk with an enzyme called drainage and then draining the whey from the curds. So first let's see what is drainage. Rennet is used for the coagulation of milk in the first stage of cheese production. Rennet is the mode of coagulation in vast majority of the world cheeses. It is induced by enzyme chymosine, a highly specific proteolytic enzyme. Rennet enzymes traditionally derive from the stomach lining of young ruminant animals such as calves. Rennet is an enzyme derived typically from the lining of the fourth stomach of young ruminants like goats, lambs and calves. It is only found in the young animals or mammals which still depend on milk as their basic source for food. However, advancements in biotechnology have led to alternative methods of production including microbial and genetically engineered sources. Animal rennet is extracted from the fourth stomach of young calves and microbial rennet is produced through fermentation using microorganisms like fungi or bacteria and genetically engineered rennet is developed through biotechnology to replicate the chymosine enzyme without animal involvement. The primary function of rennet is to coagulate milk proteins forming a curd also, rennet contributes to the flavor profile of cheese, influencing its texture and taste. The clotting of milk by renin or rennet at normal pH 6.6 is a three-base reaction. In the primary stage, rennet cleaves a specific bond in kappa casein molecule, slicing it into para kappa casein and soluble glycomacropeptide fractions. The hydrolyzed kappa casein can no longer hold the hydrophobic casein particles together. Then the calcium ions commence coagulation of casein micelles in cheese milk when about 80% of the bonds are cleaved. In the second stage, the micelles aggregate to form clusters that lead to gel formation. Water along with soluble constituents and fat are trapped into the three-dimensional network. In the final stage, the network continues to attain firmness. Cutting of the gel is timed according to the type of cheese. In soft ripened cheese, the gel is allowed to acquire more firmness, whereas for hard cheese, the cutting process starts as soon as adequate firmness is achieved. Residual rennet in cheese curd plays an important role in ripening of cheese. It is essential that lower than 50% of rennet used in cheese making is recovered in some varieties of cheese curd. Calf rennet is destroyed by high cooking temperatures used in Swiss and Italian cheeses. But in cheddar cheese, a significant amount of renin survives and participates in proteolysis to yield desirable texture and flavor. Renin is commonly used in production of hard cheeses such as cheddar, gouda and parmesan, contributing to their firm texture and characteristic flavors. While some soft cheeses are coagulated using lactic acid bacteria, Rennet is employed in varieties like brie and camembert to achieve specific textures. 
the main factors affecting the activity of rennet are temperature, pH, calcium concentration and salt concentration. Rennet works best at a temperature around 35 to 40 Celsius. If the temperature is too high, the rennet will be denatured and will not work properly. If the temperature is too low, the rennet will work more slowly. When consider the pH, rennet works best at pH of around 6.5. If the pH is too high, the rennet will not be able to bind to the casein in the milk and will not work properly. If the pH is too low, the rennet will be denatured and work will not work properly. Calcium ions are essential for the rennet to work properly. If the calcium concentration is too low, the rennet will not be able to bind to the casein in the milk and will not work properly. And the salt can inhibit the activity of rennet. If the salt concentration is too high, they are, the rennet will not work properly. Other factors that can affect the activity of rennet include the presence of other enzymes such as proteases and the presence of inhibitors such as tannins. The use of fermentation techniques and genetic modification to produce rennet are the advancements of cheese industry. Microbial rennet is often produced through controlled fermentation process using fungi like rhizomuca or bacteria such as bacillus. And advances in biotechnology have led to the development of yeast or bacteria engineered to produce chymosine, providing a more sustainable and controlled source. Microbial and genetical engineered rennet options are popular among vegetarian and halal consumers seeking cheese produce without a traditional animal rennet. So cheese manufacturers often specify the type of rennet used on product labels to meet the preferences of diverse consumer groups. Consumer demand for transparency may drive a preference for cheeses labeled with traditional or natural derived rennet sources. Ongoing research explores novel approach to cheese making, potentially reducing reliance on rennet while achieving desired textures and flavors. Rennet remains a critical component in cheese production, playing a role in coagulation and flavor development. As the industry evolves, alternative sources and production methods contribute to the sustainability and ethical considerations surrounding this essential enzyme complex. The balance between tradition, innovation and regulatory compliance continues to shape the landscape of rennet used in the food industry. So this is the overview of rennet in cheese processing. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more cheesy content. And let us know in the comments what cheese you would like to see us cover next. And thanks for watching.